Hi, Blake with Boulevard Home, and today we're gonna to talk about your kitchen appliances. The two most common complaints I get for refrigerators, ranges, microwaves, and dishwashers, and what you can do yourself to fix the problem yourself before you have to call a servicer. The number one thing you always do before you call a servicer, if you, anything that has electronics in it, like your refrigerators or your dishwashers, if you're having problems, make sure you unplug them or turn the power off to them for at least two minutes before you turn it back on. That way, you know that it's not, if it's an electronic problem, that it can be resolved that way by just resetting the power, just like resetting your phone, anything else. If your phone's not working right, your computer's not working right, you reset them. Well, that's the only way you can do it with your appliances too. So that's the first thing you wanna do with any appliance if it's giving you some weird problem. Okay, the top two complaints I get with ranges. One, your oven itself isn't baking properly, and this is true for wall ovens too. And for gas ranges, the tops aren't lighting. That's the two most common complaints I get with ranges, and this also applies again to ovens. With baking properly, generally it may not be a problem with the appliance. It may be a problem with how the appliance is being preheated. The biggest thing is with your new appliances, when the oven beeps and goes off and says it's preheated and ready to go, well, what that basically means is the air is conditioned. The air is ready to go, but the actual porcelain is actually what does the cooking in, in all the new ovens. So give it a good 10 to 15 minutes after your oven beeps at you. I know you're gonna say, well, geez, that's forever. Well, your recipe first thing says, turn your oven on while you're making your stuff. Let it preheat. Give it that extra time, let the complete oven warm up, including all the porcelain so it's irradiating your food equally so it'll actually get the best baking result. So that is the number one complaint that I get. And most times I say, my oven's off, it needs to be calibrated, I check it. 99.9% .9 of the time, they're dead on. So again, just let it preheat a little bit longer. With the top part of it, now electric, I generally don't have a lot of problems with that. And generally there's not much I could recommend to do with that other than turn the power off, it's not working right. But if it's not working right, call a servicer, let them come out and take a look at that. Now with gas ranges, that's a different story. If the burners aren't lighting, what you wanna do is check the burners for two things. One, has somebody been cooking on it and had boil over where everything went into the burner itself? Check the burners, pick the burners up that aren't lighting. Look at the burner, take the grates off, pull your burner up and off. Make sure that the burner itself here, make sure that nothing is in the burners itself. There's no food, no debris, no junk in there. And the ignition piece that's next to it that actually does the sparking, make sure that you don't have food and other stuff that's on there. If you do, clean it off, clean these really good. If you have stuff in between all of your burners here, make sure you get it out, take a toothpick, take whatever you need, clean it all out and make sure that the burner is placed properly on, this, on the cooktop itself, make sure that it lights properly. That is the biggest complaint I have with that. Basically there's boil overs. Once I clean them, once I clean the caps, once I clean the igniters, they're fine. So that is the number two complaint that I have. These are the things that you can check with your range to make sure that the range itself is working properly as far as igniting on the top before you call a servicer. All right, now we're with refrigerators. The two most common things I have with refrigerators, but you can't guess if you watch any of my videos, I bet you can't guess, ice makers. Ice makers are the number one problem on anybody's refrigerator. I don't care who they are, I don't care who's names on it, that is the number one problem on anybody's refrigerator. Now things that you can do to check before you call a servicer is make sure that the ice maker is actually turned on. I know that sounds really dumb, but make sure the ice maker is turned on and it's not turned off. A lot of the newer ones don't have arms that, that click up or click down like the old ones. They actually have a button somewhere in there that says ice maker on, ice maker off. Make sure the ice maker is turned on. That is something you can definitely check. And then check for there's no ice chunks or ice things within the ice maker itself or by the ice maker that is stopping it from functioning. So just take a peek up inside there. Make sure if there's any ice that you see that shouldn't be there, it's obviously shouldn't be there pull it off, you know, definitely do those things. There's about 20 other things that you can check, you know, besides those things, but those are the two most common things that cause failures with them. You can check out our other videos. We have a lot more in depth. And if that doesn't help you, definitely call a servicer and have them come out and take a look at that, that ice maker for you. The next biggest thing in the refrigerator, not cooling or not cooling properly. The biggest things you can do with that is to make sure that your refrigerator has proper airflow, meaning it's not in a tight cabinet that it's not supposed to be so we can have proper airflow. Make sure your condenser's clean. We have other videos on that, how to clean your condenser and how to check your condenser and how often you should clean your condenser, but definitely make sure your condensers are clean. That is definitely something that will cause your refrigerator not to work. So before you call a servicer, make sure you pull your refrigerator out, make sure your condensers are clean, make sure all your vents are clean, 
make sure that you can hear everything running. If that doesn't take care of it, please give us a call and we'll come out and we'll check it out for you. So the two most common complaints that I see on a dishwasher, it's washability problems, where it's not washing properly, or draining problems. Now generally, if it's not washing properly, it could be due to the way the machine's being loaded. Refer to your use and care manual and how the manufacturer recommends that you load your dishwasher. The thing that you really need to check is your filter in the bottom of the dishwasher, this big old filter that sits down in the bottom. Now the filters that, that sit down in the bottom of your dishwasher, they do come out. A lot of times they will get gross and they'll get food and everything else build up around them so they can't pressurize the water properly and to be able to spray the water up into your dishes with any type of pressure to get off the stuff that's on your dishes that you put into the dishwasher. So make sure you clean those filters and make sure that those are nice and clean before you call a serviceman because generally if it's not washing properly, if you can hear it running and you hear the water sloshing around in there but it's not cleaning well, a lot of times it has to do with just that filter down there is just dirty. So clean it and give it a shot. And if that doesn't take care of it, give a service or a call. The second thing that is problems with the dishwasher is not draining. A lot of that can be caused from what's being put into the dishwasher or the filters not being in place when the dishwasher is running. So you get a bunch of food and stuff down into areas of the dishwasher you don't need to be, broken glass, toothpicks that get down into the pump. So a lot of times you can pull off the screens and down in that area, you can see if there's anything down inside that sump area beneath the screen, if there is, pull it out. My favorite one is when people buy a new dishwasher to replace their old dishwasher because their old dishwasher is old and it finally stopped draining. Well, they get the new dishwasher, they put it in and they call me and they say, well, my new dishwasher is not working. What's wrong with it? It's not draining. So I go out to their house and under the sink where it's connected to the garbage disposal, if you have a garbage disposal, they haven't taken the knockout plug out inside the garbage disposal because their friend installed it for them three weeks ago and the dishwasher hasn't worked since. Well, that's because they haven't taken that knockout plug out so the dishwasher has nowhere to drain. They've connected it up, but there's nowhere for it to drain. So if you have installed a new garbage disposal, make sure you check to make sure that knockout plug is taken out of the garbage disposal so the dishwasher will drain properly. There is another video that I've gone a little bit more in depth about all the internal parts of the dishwasher and how it works and what to check and how to check it. So check that video out too. And again, that will definitely help you out before you call a serviceman to come out and help your problem. Microwaves, the two most common problems they have with microwaves is slow heating or not heating whatsoever. Slow heating is, is basically the food you put in there, it's cooking much slower than what the package recommends. Generally that is caused from the cookware itself for the most part. Now it could be the wattage in the microwave, but generally it is the cookware itself. If you're using cookware that's new cookware or cookware you're not familiar with, if you're putting it in the microwave and that cookware is getting hotter than the food is inside of it, well, that's because that is absorbing the microwave energy and it's not going into the food. So the first thing you need to check is make sure that it isn't your cookware and also check the wattage against it because cooking with an older microwave that has more wattage than the microwave that you're currently cooking with, or you've just changed cookware and and, and like I said, that cookware is getting really hot. Well, if that's the case, try a different bowl. Try something different to cook that in and see if it does a better job. Because if it does, you know it's not the microwave, it's the, the vessel that this food is being cooked in for the microwave to do its job. Instead of heating the food, it's heating the dish instead. Now, with the no heating situation. Now, I wish there was something I could tell you that's an easy fix for that, but there really isn't. The only thing you can really do is to unplug the microwave and let it sit and plug it back in. Now, I'm gonna tell you that's a long shot. If you ever watch this video, the servicer is gonna say, what is he talking about? It really is a long shot. You might have some power relay on the board that may not be closing because it's lost its memory somehow from a power surge or a power bump, but that's about the only thing you could really do for a no heat situation. Generally, if it's a no heat situation, you need to call a servicer, but that's about the only recommendation I could give you to help you on that. But they are the two most common complaints that I do see on microwaves. Well, I thank everybody for watching. I hope this was helpful on, on the things that you can check for yourself before you call a serviceman to come out and see what the problem is with these appliances. And these are the most common things that I am seeing with these appliances, the top two things. So if you have any questions or any comments, please put them below. We'd be happy to answer them please like and subscribe and we'll see you again real soon.